right, there are interesting stories on the front pages of the newspapers. Maybe we'll just touch on that quickly yeah. before we go on a quick break before daily runs. The finder says... USA, 642 Ghanaians deported between 2016 and 2018. Also, government is to supply suitable fishing nets to fishermen to improve their trade. That's coming from the Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture, Elizabeth Afole Kwe. Also, Bank of Ghana says growth prospects of economy are strong. And then finally, the Austrian president says Ghana is our most important business destination in Africa as the president visits they them. Come. They should come then more, not, not, not talk only. They should come. They should come. Yeah, they should come and do more business. So. <laughs> Well, Ghanaian Times also says, menstrual awareness education targets boys as world marks menstrual hygiene day today. Then Austrian president lords Ghana as important business destination in Africa. Then Nana Kobna in Ketia says, don't politicize national policies. There's a crime alert where cybersecurity attacks are on the increase. Five internet service providers suffer 50 attacks this year. That's coming from the police. Interesting stories there. Um, but that's that story. Even the before side you know, that, no, the the world. Sure. But it's a huge challenge for uh, rural folks. I mm. mean, uh, anytime I visit uh, these rural uh, schools, I mean, you have these kids uh, tell you that they are they are unable to come to school. They are scared of going to school. Sometimes they wade through waters, particularly at this time, May, June, July when uh, uh, there's a lot of rain mm. and uh, streams and rivers are, 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 are flooded, they, they had to wade through the rain without wearing a menstrual pad. Mm. And so the fear is that whatever is there uh, will be washed off when they do that. And so they, for a week or two, they, they will stay at home. Okay, so it's a huge thing. And I remember that some time ago, there was talk about a loan facility, portions of which mm. was to be used to uh, buy yes. menstrual pads for kids, right. which became a political debate mm -hmm. that um, the former administration was insulted that we are using loans to, to, to acquire parts for uh, 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 girls. I think that we need to talk about this. It is a huge issue that if we leave it behind, we are trying to get every child to go to school, mm. but if we don't talk about this, we will run into trouble. Right, I certainly agree with you. I think there's some basic things that for um, young ones we don't talk about and we tend to, you know, overlook it and say, well, it's a part of life. Everybody goes through it and so you should be able to go through it. But like you said, in the rural areas, even in Accra, We've got, you know, desolate places in Accra right. where children don't even have the washrooms to yeah. change. They can't even and buy it. They can't, well, they yeah. can't they even can buy it yeah. to start off with because even some of the parents don't even understand what the whole menstrual cycle is about and why you need to use a sanitary towel as against probably cloth that will be washable and all those things. And so we've got a huge challenge. And for me, it's very worrying because why should something that is a physiological part of your life cycle mm -hmm. become a problem, you know, debilitating so much that you can't even make it to school? And then when you finally even are able to access you know school that you don't have the washroom facilities to, to want to, to, change. to change and so you've got a child who's probably going to wear one sanitary towel for probably the a whole, whole day, day which yeah. is not until healthy he or until home. he or she gets home and these things well, are big it, oh no, of course no, why no, right, right you see what you put me through. she obviously <laughs> gets home and these things yeah. are worrying but you know it's interesting that we'll talk about the boys last year if mm. i remember there was a video where right. some boys were you know seen to be patronizing the use of sanitary towels and it's important because if the boys don't also appreciate it, then you've got young boys laughing about, exactly you know, at the, the girls point. who yeah. are bleeding and all that. And it makes them cower and shy away. And I remember there was a, an incident where, you know, as a young child, when we started having, you know, these menstrual cycles mm. in school, you would want your group of friends to huddle around you as if the blood was going to be dripping well, when you were walking. Yeah. It mm. was just a bizarre thing because you didn't want the boys to get to know. Mm. And if we don't educate the boys as well to support the girls who are going through these challenges, then we have a big issue on our hands. So I think we have to talk mm. about it. So I'm it. sure it, it, the, the, the education is targeting mm. the boys. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. A lot of yeah. issues to talk about today. Wendy Lai is uh, yeah. an advocate a lot for of, the menstrual uh, hygiene. passion yeah. for uh, girls who are in their menstrual uh, period. I'm sure today she will tell us a lot of stories on 
Midday Live and mm -hmm. News 360 later on, as well as News at 10. Stay. I mean, let's check the Daily Graphic. Yep. Daily <coughs> Graphic also carries these stories. It says Bank of Ghana secures 900 million Ghana cities to sanitize microfinance sector. Then Zoom Lion and Forestry Commission have partnered Rawlings to plant 10,000 trees. Kudos to them. Also, 200 African Americans to get Ghanaian citizenship. And then finally, free to air TV and danger. If Communications Ministry implements DTT, access control policy. We're back to the DTT mm, issue. Right. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> then Daily Guide, our final paper, says non-performing loans are still high. That's coming from Bank of Ghana. Then FIFA clears Kwesi Nyante Chi. And then Ofosu Ampofo fights AG. Then Ghana ranked high in Austria. Well, I don't know, but <laughs> this FIFA thing, uh, well, well a, lot of, a lot of, I don't know, Sometimes the way we consume news puts um, all of us into trouble because I, I mean, last night when I was trying to monitor what was happening, mm. a lot of people who called into radio, TV stations were angry and grinding their feet at FIFA, suggesting mm -hmm. that what they, they saw in the video they saw Kwasiyan Teji, and so why has FIFA cleared Kwasiyan Teji? But that, that is not what FIFA has mm. done. Okay, total misunderstanding of, of what FIFA has right. done. But Maybe our job is to let people know. And so if you monitored the, the, those who were calling into radio stations, right. we're, they were virtually castigating mm. the FIFA and government yeah. and everybody. But it's not that. Mm. It is in connection with his work as, as a FA boss. Right. You know, there were certain allegations. Right. That is what FIFA had come to study and looked into. There's an audit into his mm. accounts and all that and said that, well, I did, that I did, he, he didn't do anything. Yeah. So it is not in connection with the announced video or anything. So I guess that uh, people should, should stay calm and let's see how it goes. <sighs> anyway, I'm sure they will stay calm. But right. To receive GAT cash. Policy rate stayed at 16% fallout from the MPC meeting. Bank of Ghana secures 900 million uh, cities to sanitize microfinance sector. A photograph of uh, governor here. And uh, free to air TV in danger if communications ministry implements DTT access control policy. That's on the uh, daily graphic. FIFA clears question the big one on the guide and non-performing loans still high. Over some of for fight AG, we'll get a chance to talk about that. It's on the front page of the Daily uh, Guide. And uh, cyber security attacks increase. Five internet service providers suffer 50 attacks uh, this year. The police is talking there. And don't politicize national policies. Uh, the Omahini of the Chicago traditional area there talking. The Times has all those stories. My guest to do the talking, a member of the NDC's team, uh, lawyer Edujita Maklosi. Good, good morning. And I hope right, you're doing and, great. Uh, good morning to our viewers mm. and good morning to your able producers. Mm. And your team. Thanks for joining us this morning. Sure. Let's start with this conversation in the uh, Ghanaian Times whilst I wait for mm. the rep from the NPP. Uh, the story captured on page 11 says that electoral commissioners urged not to be mouthpiece of a commission. Now, Professor Jampu, of the, the, the director of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana, has admonished leadership of the EC to desist from public interactions, which are the preserve of professional communicators. The chairperson and her deputies cannot be the mouthpiece and spokespersons of the commission, telling us the EC chair cannot rig any election it's no brainer. Some of her pronouncements have not enthused some of us. That's Professor uh, Jempo talking there. Now, he goes on to say that uh, Dr. Kujua Fari, uh, Jan, a former chair of the commission, has told us uh, the same thing and says that anyone who understands our electoral processes well knows not even a father can steal elections for his son, given the kind of scrutiny and vigilantism. He goes on to say that even if leadership wants to speak, they must be sober toned down and less combative, even in the face of partisan provocation, sounding aggressive and overly defensive would be injurious to the Commission's expected image of a free, fair, transparent and neutral uh, referee. That's according to Professor Jampo. Uh, he goes on to say that uh, the unfounded fear uh, 
cannot be swept under carpet simply because power is won only to be resuscitated after losing power. We aren't all stupid. We can read and expose the selfishness of politicians. We cannot sing a particular tune to undermine the integrity of the institutions only to change the tune when power is won. And so he concludes by saying that the tendency of shifting the political goalpost, if not deliberately dealt with, will continue to inflict the EC with crisis of partial legitimacy deficit it has suffered for over two decades. And uh, he's asking the EC to um, ensure that its house is in order. That's the story on page 11 of Ghanaian Times. Yes, uh, <clears throat> Come in, let, let, let's start uh, mm. uh, this way. Mm. Um, the, the concern of not Professor Jampo alone and other civil society is that mm. even in the face of partisan provocation, the EC uh, should not be overly defensive mm. and must sound sober and tone down. Very well. Yeah, I think um, I believe in one thing. Principles should be principles. Mm and that time should not undermine principles that people have. So that, for instance, if you have an electoral commission chairperson today who, until her appointment, was the executive director of the Institute of Economic Affairs, mm -hmm. IEA, and this is a governance think tank, that has participated fully in the democratic experiment of this country. And in fact, the IEA existed before we right. started the 1992 democratic experiment. And the IEA has always played a very crucial role in the democratic process. Now, so if you have a situation where Madame J, her own public comments relative to the work of the Electoral Commission, as early as the 2016 elections were concerned, and her consistent admonition, her consistent admonition to the then EC chairperson, Madame Charlotte Osei, on how she must conduct her affairs and what is expected of her. One would believe that with the benefit of that position today, you should not run away from those very important views or principles that you have expressed your, you know, in the past. So it becomes an issue where today you are having to express a different position, different from that which you took when you were then the, 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 the executive director of the Institute of Economic Affairs. Mm. And these things border all the conduct of election. For instance, if you in the past have expressed the view that we should, as much as we can, provide so many polling stations to allow potential voters the opportunity of voting to elect their legitimate leaders, you should not take a different view today if you are in the realm, uh, you know, you are the one calling the shot. Unless, of course, the views you expressed in the past were actuated by other motivations other than the public interest. Two, it's important, and, and as uh, uh, Professor Jampo rightly pointed out, the Electoral Commission, and this, and we are talking about Jane, for instance, who in the past has underscored the importance of, of the inter-party advisory committee that is IPAC to the point of even institutionalizing it and these were her calls so even IPAC cannot impose their views on me IPAC cannot do A, B, C, D just a few years ago, you were advocating for IPAC to be institutionalized. It should not just be a committee, just a mere committee, but it must have the force of law so that whatever comes out of it, you know, you see how binding it is. Look, at the time when Afarijan and Co. 
agreed to IPAC, this committee, it was not just for jokes or trivial reasons. Because, you see, whether you like it or not, elections are where the questions of bread and butter are determined. How the resources of the country will be organized are the product of our elections. And I always say that elections have consequences. Through an election, you may elect a leader who tomorrow will come and take your business away from you. So elections are so critical that if you want all of us to participate in that process, you need to involve the political parties. So where political party A comes and says, you know what, in our view, we have a current voters register, for instance, and this register is what we've used to elect John Mahama in 2016. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Nanado Dankwa in 2016. It's what we used to elect President Mahama in 2012. All our members of parliament, that is what we have used. And so this register is as solid as anything. If there's anything that we can do, we can clean it up, make it look better and robust. You say no. In my view, let's discard the entire register and go for a new one. Because the current biometric technology, fingerprint technology, to your mind, is absolute. We do know that there's no technology that is forever. Technologies need consistent upgrade. Even the, uh, the, the, the softwares on your phone, once a while, you upgrade it to make it look better. So if, to your mind, there's a need to enhance it with a facial recognition technology, mm. all the NDC in this case is saying that, look, facial recognition run against your 10 fingerprints. Facial recognition is nowhere near your fingerprint impression. Because we do know all over that two faces, identical twins, facial recognition technology cannot make them out. And that is why, if you recall, run down to the 2016 election, Dr. Mahmoud Ban Mia did a press conference where he talked about the fact that using a facial recognition technology, they were able to see about 75,000 quote unquote, double registrant on the voters register, and he singled out the voter region, if you recall. Then he was put to test, bring out the names and the faces. And by inspection, you know that there are two faces that will be identical. But even two persons from the same womb, identical twins, their fingerprint impression will never be the same. So the fingerprint impression is always superior. And then we make the point that, look, for all intent and purpose, when you go to register, your face or your picture is also taken. So already the software that we have now takes into account. And that is why the political parties, even in the making of the CI 91, incorporated in it the possibility of manual verification. Because when Kwejo comes to sit in front of you and you have his original picture that was taken, you can see whether this is Kwejo or this is Kwejo's look alike just by looking, just by looking at the photograph. So already the technology that we have has that incorporation. The NDC believes that. This whole idea of doing a new register, as Madame Jane is trying to push toward, is a subtle attempt to voter suppress. Where, for instance, you look at a particular region where you believe that, look, this is the stronghold of, say, the opposition or the incumbent. So you take steps to ensure that less people get to register from that particular region. So why? We already have a register. That register had elected two presidents of this republic. Nothing had been shown. And in fact, the last time, Nana Dodankwe Kufuado applauded Madame J for having done a successful referendum. What was used for that referendum? It was this okay, voters' register. So all we are saying is that, look, Madam J, the posturing you have taken, where the impression, and you know you have a situation where your deputy commissioner, Dr. Bosman Asari, goes on air, says the NDC is a threat to the democracy, blah, blah, blah. The NDC, that best this democratic experiment, the NDC, the contribution of our party to the forward march of this country, you can never discount it. So all my professor, and which I agree with him, is that look, get a professional person to handle your PR. Charlotte will say, I think at a point, 
realized this and brought one Jack Batsu. Mm. Yes. He's still there. Right? Yes, but now he had been moved to the other regions. And Professor, uh, uh, Dr. Sari is now doing more or less his work. When you have a professional doing the talking, he is less antagonistic than you because you are likely to be emotional okay. when you are resolving okay. some well, of these issues. Mod, but let me welcome my second guest, Honorable <clears throat> Sir Kwame Champo, MP4 in prior, so a member of the NPP. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Hope you are doing good. I'm blessed. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we, 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 we're looking at a story on the Ghanaian Times, page 11, where Professor Jempo of the, uh, the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana is suggesting that um, the leadership of the Electoral Commission must look for a professional communicator to do the talking for them. Uh, he goes on to say that even if, if leadership want to speak, they must sound sober, toned down, and less combative, even in the face of partisan provocation. Now, he says that sounding aggressive and overly defensive will be injurious to the Commission's expected image as fair, free, transparent, and neutral referee. But on the other side, he says that some political parties tend to shift the goalpost, and they do this deliberately uh, in the fact that when they are in the position, they see all right, well, uh, all wrong with the EC when they are in power. Um, they see all right with the EC. What is your take on this? Thank you very much. Good morning and good morning to my yes. colleague. Sorry, you're annoying. So I sorry know. I don't, no, don't <laughs> bother. I'm so grateful. The most important thing for us in this country is to deepen and develop our system of governance we have adopted as a people, democracy. Mm -hmm. And in this democracy, it is purely an engagement business. I believe in engagement. That's why I'm here sitting on your set this morning. Mm. And I want all of us as a people growing together in this enterprise to learn necessarily not to use characters as pointers for offices. The principle that we should enforce and ensure that a system that all of us believe in performs and performs efficiently is what we should all be craving for. I get worried, and in the past few days, I'm getting worried and into weeks. We are just, the narrative is just the persona of Jean Menza and some colleagues of theirs. Unfortunately, some friends of us coming from academia also, let's speak in the way that will help encourage the actors who are in the saddle. I could be your colleague. I could be somewhere tomorrow. When you try to help by way of advancing an opinion that you think should serve as a counsel to me, our choice of language and the way we put it out is also very, very important. I want all of us to understand that this country since 1992, when we held a referendum, decided that we would allow ourselves to be governed by rules and by the systems that we have adopted as a convention. We have done it within these past two decades and getting into a third decade. We've seen how the office, the or players who have come into the office, how they have done it. Let us for a second tell ourselves this is our beloved country and change the narrative. We are so easy to just run after personalities and leave the business away. We could have done that, and I was happy when my colleague left Jean and Co's name and was discussing the issues. He went to look at facial recognition technology, i.e. biometric fingerprint, fingerprint technology. This is the conversation we should hold as a country, which best fits our bill, and drop the characters behind. When everybody finds us, the players and the actors in the center, engaging in what is before us today, and what is best practice, as we all say, best practice is goals. You learn from others who have advanced better than you have done. And when we are able to go this way, we change the system. That is the change we desire. That is the change we call for. 
and no change comes easy because it is human beings like myself who are going to sit to drive the change. So many a times, you will definitely see a name or a personality mentioned. But the counsel is this. We should not make the personalities the, the conversation. The conversation must be what change do we need, what change do we require? Has it been a conversation in this country that our voters register had issues and we needed to look at it and reform? Were we able to clean it thoroughly when we said we needed and wanted to clean it thoroughly? Do we have time to clean it fully? Must we go and engage in a new exercise of bringing a new register? This is the conversation. Leave the characters out. This is us. It's our democracy. It's governance for the people by the people. And it is us. So I worry when those of us who have opportunity to lead and get the following to follow us, change the narrative and set the discourse on personality banter. And in the last few weeks and days, that has been the character. And it has been so, and it's becoming that that is the norm. This is my worry as a politician and as a player in this enterprise. That game must change and must stop. So you won't leave out politicians belonging to both sides as, as engaging in this game you're talking about? When you mentioned Professor Jampo, mm. he said when. That is where I went to for people in academia. Mm. Give us a narrative that serves the interest. You see, when we go into history, and in, in recent history, mm. and you listen to all of us, our narratives, <laughs> we get away with it. And my concern is that let us do the right things. I, sometimes I worry because I'm going to mention a name here. The General Secretary of the NDC is a very seasoned and experienced current politics of this nation, a character of it. So many a times over the years, the experience he has gained, I expect him to change the discourse because we learn as we mature. When I first entered parliament, I did not speak like this. I sit here today and I speak because I am aging in the enterprise. <laughs> and I've realized that I have sat on the left-hand side of the speaker for two terms. I am sitting on the right-hand side of the speaker for this term. And I see the difference. It must affect my behavior and my conduct. And that is the way we can develop this country. So when you have people using the same strategy, the same skill they had, I remember in 2008, when he had just been elected into office as a general secretary, carrying papers, flying them before the cameras, that the then government wanted to steal the election and had bloated the register. When we had opportunity and you had it for two terms, and I'm happy his party has blessed him with a lot of knowledge and it's time to express himself. I hate discussing people, mm. but in times you draw instances to learn from let us all learn over the period of the things we have gained. Let us change it. Other than that, we have disappointed the entirety of this station. While the politicians change the narrative, those, the referees, and I, the, and I want to, let's say it is a commission, not the chairperson, the referees, what should be their, their behavior? The referee's behavior is like you and I sitting here today. Mm. They are human. They voluntarily reason and will do anything. That is why he talked about us. That let us put the cards down when you come. It is not me. I'm not wearing my lenses today, but you are in your lenses. So you may see clearer than I see today. Mm. So is it a lens you're supposed to put on to see? Should we put the lens on? At the end of the equation, at the end of the day, it is us human beings who will sit in the system. How do we correct the system so that anybody gets in, they cannot do it their way? My colleague talked about Jean's period with IEA mm. when she was not easy. As you are an anchor today in TV3, tomorrow when you become an anchor in another studio, which is not set up like this, different orientation for you. So you would act and behave as a human being. 
you may have your expertise and experiences as a broadcaster. Mm. That will be there with you. But you would have to maybe shift the position of your seat. Are we supposed to be discussing that or be looking at the conversation you are holding that everybody wants to listen to? This is my little counsel I'm coming up with this morning. And that's why it worries me. If we begin and we continue to discuss personalities and not the consent of everybody, which is the subject matter, i.e. facial recognition. I have seen facial recognition technology that's able to differentiate between twins. And mind you, our iris, even though we are twins, it's still different for every person. So that is why I said we should hold a conversation and then dive deeper into the subject and get the best information and put it out there so that we all buy into it. You see, my concern, I want to do wrap up. My concern is where I, I don't want you to drive me to. Okay. Because the a moment we allow ourselves to discuss personalities, we are moving away from the from the issues. From, from, from the, issues. the issues must be laid bare. Bring your mind on the issue, not on the personality. That is why when we make laws, we do not legislate with people's names. Because every person, reasonable person, can behave. When you give me food, I can decide to use my hand. I can decide to use a cutlery. Depending on what my communication from my head gives yes. and arrives. So, so you disagree with you, Professor Jam, when he says that. It, it, if, for instance, the personality involved react to let's say partisan provocation it, it, it you know you know where you know where professor, you know where professor john campus argument become flawed Tell these are his most of them are his contemporaries Tell from the academia so he knows them personally and so if you give up about the narrative like this, you, you infer on the substance some words Professor Jumpo used, sober. If you go and infer about people's conduct, you are impugning that they are a bit arrogant and they are not submissive and it goes against the characters of the people you are talking about. He says it goes against the image of the college. No, no, because at the end of the day, mm. you said the characters, if they do not you, appear you, sober, you could appear as who? Down. Who are they? It is the characters that are representing the institution. Mm. It is very important that we have spokespersons. It is not every which, person which, he, 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 which I support him for, mm. but the subsequent commentary is not in a good taste. Okay. I'm grateful. You know, Honourable Achampo, um, quickly come in, then we can move you know, on. You um, I'm, I'm so happy. Uh, I think uh, Honourable Achampo most definitely appeared to um, sound a bit different from how the ordinary members of his party and communicators sound. Oh, he's also an ordinary member. Oh, oh he's oh, a, oh, a, an elected. Okay. <laughs> but because, see, I am, making, I am making this point because, okay. you see, if it's about conduct, until 2017, the Electoral Commission chairperson was also a woman, Mrs. Charlotte said. In fact, your own colleague member of parliament, sitting MP, Honorable Kennedy Japan, you recall how she debased the woman. The very thing about the woman was taken away from her. Your party leader there, Nana Dodanko Ekufuado, who uh, uh, Charlotte Osser is a personal friend too. Many leading members of the MPP know Charlotte Osser from her days at the law faculty, when she went to do her LLM in Canada. In fact, her graduation, Nanado was there. When this woman was undermined and attacked, your national women organizer, then Oti Kojaba, even insinuated that the claim by Honorable Kennedy Japan requires investigation to give legitimacy to that claim. What is your point? The point I'm making is that I am happy that today he's advocating for a different conversation where it is not the personality but the issues. The impression was created then 
that Charlotte Ose had come to steal the election. And so she became the center of attack every day and then until she was hounded out of office. Today, if we are advocating for a different conversation, good. It is also not the case that my general secretary will take on Jay on a personal level. It has always been the issue. And General Mosquito, in terms of institutional knowledge, I don't know which of the general secretaries today come close to him. And so when he comes on board with an issue, it is not just for trivial reasons, but where the impression is created that, oh, General Mosquito speaks to issues or personalizes issues, he may have the benefit of hindsight. How he had dealt with this person, who knows? It may well be that Jane, in her former position of IEA boss, had interaction with General Mosquito. And so if today he sees this woman doing something contrary to the position advanced by her in the past, he should be worried. I agree with you when okay. you say, for we'll instance, just so wrapping up, yeah. where you, for instance, make the point that, look, if you have a facial recognition technology, there is a question of your iris. That's an entirely different game altogether, which has nothing to do with facial recognition. Because in capturing the iris, you require to deploy a different technology. The point I may be making here is that, honorable, your constituency in price, so, at least I've had the benefit of passing through. It's an exciting place. Very. In fact, very exciting. But Honorable will tell you that there are several adjoining villages around. Look at the community centers to where your district electoral office is. If you're having to deploy those people from those villages to come to the district office for the purpose of participating in the electoral process, I know Honorable, your constituency chairman will call you and say, Honorable, we need to get more of the 18 or to be on the register. Give us money to now transport them to the district office. Why should the states, in making the right to vote, make it so cumbersome that people's interest in this participatory democracy will be undermined? Okay, so, so when so, the general so secretary you're talking about exactly, the same thing, and yes, that's not exactly. So when the general okay. secretary makes this point, it cannot be personal. Okay, I'm grateful. By the way, Champon. Let's, let me, let's move on to this one. Uh, the Bank of Ghana says the growth prospects of the economy is very strong, are very strong. Dr. Addison uh, said that uh, uh, all the major indicators are pointing in the right direction. Uh, he talks about a flourishing private sector, inflation well anchored, and foreign reserves reliable. The Bank of Ghana remains confident the economy is in good health. Um, uh, he goes on to say that uh, the robust pace of economic activity is supported by improved sentiments from businesses following the recovery of the local currency from its sharp depreciation and favorable growth prospects uh, that we saw. Early indications already show that the economic activity in the first quarter is picking up and we are likely to see a lot more uh, economic buoyancy. That's Dr. Addison talking there. Now, let's, let's see... The, the indicators are right. They, they are pointing in the right direction. The concern is that between the indicators and the day-to-day -day life of the people, there seem to be a gulf. How do we bridge it? Thank you very much. Before I discuss the bread and butter issues, you, you want to a quick I just want to have okay. A quick okay, okay, okay. Quick. You see, I, 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 I am trying and I'm doing my best. Okay. I may be a crusader. Mm. Uh, I want us to move on, but I just want to cite an example. Mm. A good communicator from the staple of the National Democratic Congress, who have had the benefit of being in the executive and enjoying the legislature, my younger brother, Mutala Mohammed. I watched him yesterday on a different set. He was so categorical that Madame Jean Mensa is an MPP paparachik, <laughs> and that all that she's doing, she's MPP. Did he, did he prove it? The host, like your good self, mm -hmm. said, can you give me basis? But the host was said, have you seen her party card before? Mm -hmm. and he was quick and a smart communicator and a politician would tell you, I don't even have a party card. Okay, so you, he, he got away with that. But if I were in the saddle, I would, I would find a way to get him to give me strict proof. <laughs> so this is it. 
it, it worries when we take positions that moves us away mm -hmm. from the center. That's why, and I'm happy like he said, when you discuss the iris, because the human body, the entire anatomy, mm -hmm. have different features. If we want to go molding and employ technology, let us look for the best one that helps of us. And let's advance that. But when you drop names, and you see, General Esiedu Nketia is a very experienced politician, a very smart communicator. And when it comes to using language and, and playing around it, he can catch you in a corner. <laughs> and at the time you are done, he's finished with you. You see, and that is the way he does it. And then there are several forms of communication, mm, you okay. know, to provoke characters. Mm. Uh -huh. So for some of us, you, you, you can preach so much about him, but it's a person I have known growing up as a student. Mm. And at my age today, I've done politics <laughs> for a while, and I know who he is. That is why I described only him. That people like them, whether we love them or you don't like them, they have become part and parcel of the history of the body politic of this nation. And I call on them. They should bring the best that they have practiced mm. and they have gained that experience and expertise of before all of us. So then we have a fine, I'm not calling for a church room behavior no. of politics. <laughs> Which everybody must speak their mind. Right. But we must conduct ourselves in a manner that brings... When you step out of the borders of this land, Ghana is hailed. You go to represent Ghana in meetings and your peer countries in Africa, by the time they finish their contribution, you are lost of words to speak because everybody sees Ghana as a beacon. And so when we come back home and we drag ourselves and tear ourselves apart this way, it worries some of us. Beautifully eulogized by the governor of the Bank of Ghana. Yes, the drive, as I see it, as an observer of our economy today, is macro level excellent. Going forward, I think we need to focus on the micro as well. And for me, that is where the economy management must focus so that everybody who is not necessarily an employer, but an employee, Trading in one form, either formal or informal, the narrative becomes so simplified for them. For every economic major player who is within the corporate world, mm -hmm. looking at the policies and the directions we are moving as a country, sees hope and sees a brighter future. But it is not every personality in this economy who is a corporate viewer. And for me, the success this government has talked I would say is unprecedented because major policies have been implemented. But typical of us, as we've been doing it to ourselves, we we'll say we've seen nothing, nothing is working and nothing is going on well. But is because it something we're seeing? Exactly. Change is not a morning show like we're doing now. It takes systematic planning, deployment, and evaluation. When my colleague was talking about Jane's past and her present, and that she was advocating that IPAC needs to be backed by legislation. Before that can be done, we need to come to Parliament. There's no institution in this country that can legislate. Apart from the Supreme Court, because we do our common law practice in this country, so as part of our lawmaking process, in their discharge of their duties also help us build our laws. But for statutory, you cannot go through any other way but through the Parliament of Ghana. So to even get that thing materialized, mm. it is a journey. Similarly, I just cited an instance. Our growth as a people, the systems we have put in place, I know, and I'm, as, I'm speaking as a politician, when we did the banking reforms, excellent but it has affected a lot of people in the chain. And they are the people we should look to and see how, that's when I talked about the micro, we should look to today, if we had not done that, there would have been a major backlash. Because most businesses 
That is when the micro would have failed totally. And this economy would have been so bad for us because people business would have gone because the monies that are supposed to back those banks for them to operate and exist were non-existent. The government would definitely would have gone to look for money from elsewhere to come and support all those banks before the people who had their deposits in the system could have been sorted out. Now, when you are met with this position of a hot pan and a rock, the decisions you take is where people realize that, indeed, you have a foresight and you want to drive it somewhere. These reforms is stabilizing. Once it is fully stabilized and the policies the government is advocating and implementing, which will draw all, it's going to be a ripple effect, it will draw all these people who are affected into different areas of operation and they will function differently. You may not be a banker like you used to be, but we, have all, we all have professions before we joined whatever trade we are in today. You will find your level definitely in the industry I and see. in the economy. Is this achievable in one and a half years? This government's lifespan is four years. We are in the middle of the third year. Is this achievable? That kind of the rippling effect you're talking about between now and December, is it achievable? We Can say, we see that's that, what we the, say the micro change? That's why we say governance is a continuum. Okay. There were policies that were implemented in the previous administration. Mm that you cannot do anything about this government is running with. It is now that this government is putting before its system that we must follow, its medium term. When it took over in 2017, whether the system liked it or not, they had to pursue the implementations that President Mahama and his administration had done. So that is why me, I keep advocating that let's be speaking about the issues. Other than that, we politicians, we always give a different impression to the following because they really do not appreciate the systems. When you inherit, you can do some, but it is very minute skill. By the time you travel and you begin to see, that's why I said this government has done monumental changes when it comes to policy, bringing commodity exchange. There are several things before you even disseminate the information, before you get people to appreciate and understand all these things and buy into. Look, the free senior high school policy is the one everybody knows, which for me, it is very courageous and a bold step. It is not easy. If you're a president and granted as the chief executive of your, for this is an instance, mm. your accountant brings you your balance sheet and you look at it and he tells you that the only thing that can get this company to survive is to tighten people's salaries a little bit and then make sure you give them free lunch. So that they, they come to work in the morning, they close in the evening. If you give them lunch in the afternoon and they get satisfied, when they start work, by the time they get hungry, there is food for them. In the evening, they go home. If they don't get anything to eat in their home, you close your ears for a while before you come back to give them dinner. You understand me? Right. It, you take, it takes a courageous personality to advance such a policy. Because you realize that if you want to do that, you will struggle. But we took that decision. Mm. It's not that alone. Okay. And beyond that, for instance, I will say, unless you haven't done so before, this is a lawyer. Mm. He will tell you our courts is a marathon. Nobody goes to court and comes out tomorrow. <laughs> it will take you a while. That is how life is. That is the reality of society. Factories, procurements, it will not be done in a day. But because of the opportunity of media pluralism, and the plethora of networks all over. When we are offered opportunity, you said you build schools. Where are the schools? I say it and I get away with it. And another person listening takes it away and flies with it. And it keeps on, it becomes cyclical. Me, I say, let's look at the substance. Let's no look issues. at the issues. And we can do it well. You people are helping us. Look, great. There are some few networks I watch. You do a lot of developmental conversations. Mm. And I want to tell you, this is sharp. Because these are the matters we need to be discussing. Great. Not that somebody went and pee in a corner, and that why must he pee in a corner? Thank okay, Lord, did you? So that's it. The, the economy, Bank of Ghana said we are we are on track. Um, <clears throat> at least as a Bank of Ghana governor, I will not fault him if he comes out. I'm not expecting any com anything different in terms of the conversation from him. I would uh, be surprised for the governor to come and say the economy is not on strong footing. What is curious 
is that his own reports consistently that he's churning out business confidence and all of those things. He should go back and look at his own report. What was the nature of business confidence in 2017 compared to 2018 and where we are going? His own figures appear to be going on one direction. His conversation is going on one direction. Look, I have always maintained, and because at least for my first degree, I had to do economics. And so for second year, there is a course, Economy of Ghana. Mm. They will take you back to Gorgesberg time, and then the conversation moves to the very last time when I was doing it. I don't know whether the narratives have changed. And you realize that the nature, the fundamental nature of the economy makes this economy one quote-unquote online support. If today, for no reason, commodity prices begin to fall, whether you like it or not, and you, for instance, the Honorable MP here, has the benefit. You recall when Sir Tekla came to Parliament and did a very beautiful budget, peg crude oil prices at $90 per a barrel. Mm. Within that year, crude oil prices fall to almost $40. So we were losing $50 on each barrel. It has nothing to do with his economic outlook or policy. And that alone is going to have an effect on the economy. By that time, our brothers consider that to be the mark of what? Incompetence. Two, we have had a situation where in the past, and they were led by very seasoned economies. And for me, that is a problem. Where, for instance, the statistical service comes out to say, for close to 30 months, we've maintained a single digit inflation. Then Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, in order to undermine the work of the statistical service, goes to Malamata market and now begins to do a new computation of our inflation figures. He goes to us, what is the price of cement? What is the price of this? Just to show that, unlike the, the, the single digit inflation that the statistical service is putting out, what the market reality is showing is that there is what upward review. Yesterday, a colleague posted on Facebook that, look, in 2016, 25 kilo of Gino rice was in the region of 150 Ghana cities. Today, it is going for 300 Ghana cities. Single digit inflation. So, like the Dr. Mahabudu Baumia formulation, the figures may be showing single digit, but when you go to the market, it's a different permutation. My honorable MP, and the way his constituency is, you know you have taxi drivers who do a lot of this work have conversation with them. That in the past when they were buying petrol, say, 14, 16 Ghana cities, and today when he is having to buy the same gallon, no uh, uh, top up, for close to 24 Ghana cities, how much sales is able to make to the owner of the car? These are the economic realities. That person who used to buy LPG gas today, how much are they buying the same kilogram of LPG gas? This is how the conversation. And by the time you're done, you note that the governor of the Bank of Ghana is living in a different economy. He's living in an entirely different economy. The economy, of, the economy of Ghana. The, the, the economy of bread and butter. And you see, sometimes where do we go? We want validation from the IMF, the World Bank. And almost the World Bank and the IMF have always applauded every government. By the time they are done with you, you know that what the people of Ghana feel is completely at variance. Look, Dr. Addison knows that before he started the banking sector reform, he needed legislation. And you are an MP. You know the banks and specialized deposit taking legislation, that is Act 930, was passed in 2016. It is that legislation that had given him the, the, the statutory powers to proceed with the reform 
Because with that legislation, he could not have moved on with the manner in which he has done. I believe that, like you pointed out, governance is continuum. Mm -hmm. But where the conversation is not reducible to, oh, the fact that your inflation figures, like you pointed out, micro figures, those micro figures, if at the end our GDP shows growth, the economists will ask, where is the growth coming from? If the growth, for instance, is coming from oil, and let the point also be made that this government had gotten over $600 million from oil, just oil, that no government had ever gotten. And therefore, it is definitely going to shape how your economy and its outlook. But at the end of the day, if your non-oil growth is not showing significant growth, but your oil growth is where the actual growth is coming from. Then what it means is that the Ghanaian, quote Ghanaian, contribution to the economic growth may actually be on the downward instead of upward trajectory. Because at the end of the day, you are asking manufacturers, how much more are they working? Because they are actual drivers of the economy. As for the big oil players, whatever they make, they take it out to their countries which is slightly different from our conversation. So I strongly believe that notwithstanding the fact that the narrative shows, like the governor is saying, oh, they indicated, blah, blah, blah. The actual economy of Ghana is in a reverse gear. Regret that. I'm going to jump on 10 seconds. Thank you very much. I, I, I'm happy they ended so. That is a good way to communicate for us. But then, the, the facts are simple. Members are churned out by the Bank of Ghana mm. are no different than the reality. <laughs> Look at it, they are, they are verifiable authorities. <laughs> he cited an instance. I don't know when that, that is an authority of measuring inflation in the country. So, I mean, it's like going to of our market. But that, that, is, that is what it is. And for me, we've, we've been practicing this economy over a period. Mm. And if we're going to go into history, like he talked about Gudgesbeck, yeah. we haven't changed the structure of this economy since we inherited it from Gudgesbeck mm. Day. And we are now trying to make a paradigm shift. It's not going to be easy. That's why we find ourselves in the conversations that we are holding. And to be able to achieve that, it is a very, for instance, the highest growth we've attained in this country was in 2011. And that was, as a result, 14% of oil growth. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it was an inheritance of what John Kufo had done. That's why I keep saying that <laughs> governance <laughs> is a continuum. <laughs> okay. And it is, it is not, and if you put in the right mechanisms, you achieve a better yield. I you know, have by the time the MVP came, the ENI, we, we are not going to say, they, 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 when they took the, over, the when, when President fields, Mahama took so over much. And from, today they when, when President Mahama took over from President Mills <laughs> and had his own election, <laughs> and we disputed, and they were facing challenges in the economy. They said because we went to court, they could not focus to manage the economy. Yeah, That's months, why things were months, not going well. That months, was the narrative. Months, we're, months, not we're not going to say it. We're not going to say it. Because they are disturbing eight, eight us in the economy. But you know, that, not, but you know the banking sector reform has created so much job losses. <laughs> okay, okay. You know that. I'm grateful. I don't want to say a but the NP from Kaya, so he's a member of the NPP. Eduji Tamaklo, a member of the NDC. Grateful for your time with us. Stay with us, we have more coming. <laughs>